the visitor center in Powell Butte, and we're going to go up the Mountain View Trail to the top. Now, I challenge you to find anything boring about this place. It's interesting visually, aesthetically, geologically, historically. Let me talk about history. In the 1870s, most of the trees were cut from the top of Powell Butte to make room for orchards and grazing land, and the trees were used to build the growing city of Portland. Here's an engraving of what Portland looked like in 1879. Sometime later, Swiss settlers started a dairy here. At one time, they ran hundreds of cows here, and the dairy operated into the 1940s. Here's a picture uh, looking north of what this place was like when cows were grazing on it. From 1893 to 1897, there was a village called Cronenberg. They had their own post office, and it was right about 162nd and Powell. I have walked on this butte almost 2,000 times. People say, well, don't you get bored walking the same place all the time? You think this is the same place in the sun and the rain, in the summer and the winter? It's always different, but I have yet to see a single boring day. Now we're at the top, what's called the Pioneer Orchard. It was planted sometime around the turn of the century. Love these trees. They're beautiful in the sunshine. They're even more beautiful in the fog. Look how ghostly they look. Now we're at the top. On a clear day from here, you can see four mountains and numerous small buttes or boring volcanoes. There's two possible explanations for why these are called boring volcanoes. One geological and one historical. Now you've got to remember the boring volcano stopped erupting 300,000 years ago. For all that time, they haven't really done anything. They just sat here. The mountains around them, in contrast, have been rather active, let's say. Let me start with Mount Hood. Isn't this a beautiful, peaceful mountain? Tourists from all over the world, and even further away, come to see this beautiful mountain. But this is an active mountain. The last major eruption was in about 1790, and it sent a mud flood, or a lahar, down the Sandy River. Later in 1805, when Lewis and Clark got there, Clark jumped out of his canoe and got sucked down in the quicksand, almost drowned there. That's why the original name of that river was the Quicksand River. A small eruption, just a little pop, was recorded in 1907. Boy, this mountain could go off any time. It's fearsome, but it's also exciting. Now, we turn to Mount St. Helens. Oh, isn't this a beautiful, peaceful, cool mountain? Yeah, right. Remember May of 1980? Both these mountains show the violence that underlies the peaceful beauty of this area. So if Powell Butte and the others really are boring volcanoes, it's only in comparison to the incredible mountains around them. Now there is a historical explanation for the name Boring Lava Field, and this is, well, the real explanation. It has to do with a man by the name of William Harrison Boring. I'm telling you, this guy, boring by name, not by nature, he was a Civil War hero. He was wounded so bad in the Battle of Vicksburg that he got a medical discharge and his face was disfigured. You can see from this clipping, he wore a beard for the rest of his life to hide his disfigurement. He moved here after the Civil War into the area around Boring, and he lived, you can see, to the age of 91 to 1932 before he died. Okay, so Powell Butte is the opposite of Boring. But I just realized maybe it's better if people do think it's Boring because then they won't come here. That'll leave more for me. Well, if that's true, then I shouldn't have made this video. Damn.